Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Florida is one of nearly three dozen states that have passed uh, organized retail crime statutes. And we've actually gone one step further by launching something called FORCE, which is the Florida Organized Retail Crime Exchange, a task force and database for police, prosecutors, and retailers to work together to organize, uh, to identify organized retail theft rings. Uh, and it's been our experience that communication among stakeholders, the private sector, law enforcement, uh, both public and private, is really a key part of identifying and combating uh, these violent and costly crimes. Um, and I would like to start with you, um, Mr. Is it, I want to get it right, is it Milheiser? All right. Mr. Milheiser, I know you too have a significant background as a uh, former federal prosecutor. And I, I, you had mentioned this in your testimony, the same concept. Would you please elaborate on your experience and your observation on how those private partner uh, collaborations with federal law enforcement agencies can be an important part of really combating this problem? Right. Well, there are examples that have been successful. If you look at human trafficking, uh, drugs, OSADEF, when we attack kind of the gang problem and the cartels coming in from Mexico. So the best way to attack it is to have as many people at the table uh, all kind of pulling their weight and doing their job. So we need the local prosecutors there to prosecute, oftentimes the bulk of the cases, but then also the federal prosecutors there to get involved too. Um, federal law enforcement oftentimes can help with um, the kind of technical aspects of these cases, you know, if they're crossing state lines, using computers, oftentimes out of the country, you know, these are international operations. So you have the Secret Service and the FBI and you have these other federal law enforcement agencies that can use their expertise and everyone working together collaboratively is the best way to attack the problem. But the only way it works is if everyone does their job and every part of the person there. You know, the, the feds have to say, yeah, we'll sit at the table and we'll actually file charges. You know, I spent a long time and I would guess Mr. Flynn has this problem sometimes too. So working with the feds on cases, you know, sometimes they're like, hey, we're too busy. We don't want to file that. No, no, you're going to file that because it's going to help and it, what is best for the community. So everyone has to get together and sit down and how can we best attack the problem? Everybody has to carry their weight and do their job. And now you just touched on something that's very important there, the collaboration between those federal law enforcement resources, uh, but also local, and the, and the important role of working together. Would you describe for us the role of local law enforcement in that process? We've got the feds at the table. They're providing expertise and resources. Uh, describe for us the role, though, of the local on-the-ground law enforcement as well. 100%. They are a, a big part of the equation. You know, when you look at law enforcement around the country, 85% of it is state and local and tribal. So the federal law enforcement is a small part of law enforcement in general in, in this country. So those local individuals have to be used. I mean, for a long time, I was a state court prosecutor and worked with those local sheriffs, worked with the local police um, to help identify uh, those criminals, help bring them to justice, help prosecute cases. Uh, so they play an integral part and it cannot be uh, you know, law enforcement in their silos, silos, whether it be FBI or DEA in their silo, sheriffs, police in their silo, they have to be talking, they have to be coordinating uh, to best attack the problem. And so on that subject, in the event that local law enforcement, whether it is a local district attorney, a local police chief, in the event that one of the individuals who should be at that table and part of that collaboration decides not to do their job, whether it is one of these soft on crime policies, a decision not to prosecute certain offenses, how does that affect the overall effectiveness of combating criminal activity in our communities? Well, it, it has a negative effect. I mean, when you don't have everybody pulling their weight and doing their job, especially the local uh, prosecutor. So if the local prosecutor is not willing to prosecute these cases, uh, not willing to do their part, it has a negative effect. Um, and I guess then the next question is, what do we do about that? Um, I think one thing we do is call those prosecutors out. Now it's difficult, obviously, uh, in this forum, but it's for the community to become aware of it. You know, I, I mentioned during my testimony, uh, an organization I started, the American Center for Law and Public Safety, with U.S. attorneys from around the country. We have law enforcement, local prosecutors to do this very thing, to educate the public on what is a good prosecutor, what is needed, how can we have safe communities, and to call out those bad prosecutors. 
Because I, I think people for years took for granted that their local prosecutor was gonna do their job and prosecute cases. And all of a sudden they didn't, crime increased. And they're like, oh my gosh, what happened? So we need to educate the public on what is a good prosecutor and assist those with resources. That's where the federal government can come into play. You know, there's often scarce resources for local prosecutors. They can assist in that way. All right. Thank you, sir. Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank you. And 